if you like pina coladas. Anyway, very festive. Not really festive. I don't know. Just have a Hawaiian shirt. It's not even really Hawaiian, really. It's just. Let's eat food. Oof. So my box got a widow smashed. Um, it's a little, a little scrunched, a little crushed, and uh, Hindi. And it says, see inside for explanation. Well, I'm pretty sure Hindi has something to do with, I don't know, India. <laughs> I came prepared this time with my knife. Oh wait, I was wrong. I'm sorry for making assumptions, but it's Turkey. I don't remember if I've been to Turkey. Probably, at the rate we've been going, we've been pretty much everywhere so far. So why not Turkey again, assuming we've been there, which we may not have, and I might be lying about it. Turkey, welcome. If you've not been here before, if you have, then you know the drill. Basically, this is Yum's box. I eat the stuff in it. I don't do it all at once, although I haven't had dinner, so I might eat a lot of things in here. You never know. It's always a surprise. So if I change outfits, that's what's happened. It's a different day. New Yum, new me. Not really. Same me all the time. Anywho, uh, but they come with these fun little things. So, all sorts of fun stuff about Turkey, including uh, information about Istanbul and Gaziantep. Mmm, tasty. I don't know what any of these things mean, but there's Russia and there's Georgia and Iran off to the side in Bulgaria and Greece over there. Welcome to Turkey. And then we've got our official Yums Awards, where basically I get to rate all the Yums and uh, solve a secret puzzle, which will tell us something about the Yums in the next package, which I used to do and occasionally still do, but sometimes don't do because I like the surprise. <laughs> Before we dive into the Yums, every packet has information about said country. So let's talk about Turkey. Let's talk Turkey. Welcome, it says. Greetings from the Republic of Turkey. As a part of the Fertile Crescent, oh, fancy, Turkey was home to some of the earliest human civilizations some 11,000 years ago. As the bridge between Europe and the Middle East, it served as a bustling cultural center for the Greek, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman empires. And as a newly independent nation, like recently? How recent? Turkey, what? You not been a nation forever? Anyway, uh, Turkey now combines the ancient tradition with amazing innovation. We've got the yums to prove it, ready to explore. Oh! It's a little bit shorter than some of the other ones have been a little bit longer, but that's nice because it makes the video not as long. <laughs> Although I'm already making it long by rambling. Let's dive in! So, hmm, we've got chips and more maybe chips. I'm not really sure and some some bars and things and I don't think this box was outside too long so hopefully things haven't gotten like you know melty although luckily it wasn't super hot outside so let's have you know what you have for dinner you have kebabs you have andule or andul I'm not sure uh, baked kebab type snackums like this they look like kebabs Let's eat those. There's something else in there that looks like it has peppers in it. <laughs> kebab! Burp, 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 burp. Corn snack with grilled kebab flavor. Mm. Every once in a while, we find a snack so essential to country we're visiting that it needs nearly no explanation. And yet we have a giant paragraph describing it, so let's dive in. This yum is one of them. We're nearly no explanation, and then we have the... Anyway. Nothing says turkey like kebabs. They're the common thread throughout the country's insanely long history. 790,000 years ago, that's a long time, ancient humans savored flame-seared meat in the hills of what is now Turkey. In medieval times, Turkish soldiers used their swords to grill meat over an open fire. That's where we get the phrase shish kebabs, as sis is Turkish for sword or skewer. And if you've ever had a doner, maybe, kebab sandwich, you have turkey to thank. In the 1970s, Turkish immigrants brought over doner kebab, made from meat that's been slow roasted on a spinning vertical spit, over to Germany, where it became an instant success, because who doesn't love slowly roasted meat? Aside from vegans. Sorry, guys. Vegans. Um, anyway, fast forward to today, Turkish kebabs have broken into the snack scene, inspiring these crunchy kebab-flavored corn and chickpea bites. Ooh, chickpea. Chickpea bites. Ready to taste the newest spin on the ancient Turkish tradition? Yes. Yes, I am. Because I enjoy chickpeas. I enjoy kebabs. I enjoy all the things. Is this made of chickpeas or no? We'll never know because none of this is in English. That's a lie. A lot of it's in English. It is suitable for vegetarians. Hey, so that little jib jab I made earlier. I got nothing against vegetarians. Oh, well, you know what? You, you got more, more juice than I do. These are interesting looking. To not eat the meats. 
I love the meats. I love the animals, but I love the meats too. So they're like little weird. Let me see if I can find a longer one. Like a little weird squiggly thing. Hmm, hold on. Hold on. So it's like a little weird. It does this little bit of squigglage. Ha. Oh. Not the texture I was expecting. Not really a lot of flavor either. Hold on. Hold on. This one's orange. Let's eat it. Not really a lot of flavor. Or smell, I mean, either. Hello? Hello, hello? Flavor? Where are you? Hello? Anyone? Throw these tomatoes, chick peas? What's happening? Nope. I mean, it, men it mentions those, but I mean, it says corn snack and it just says yellow corn. Oh no, yellow corn flour chickpeas. Wheat flour corn starch, yada yada yada. Huh. It's got a texture that makes me think of, um, like kind of like puff corn cereal ish kind of. Need more flavor. Not a lot of whole lot in there. Huh? Hello? Flavor. Not bad. They just kind of, you know, don't have a lot happening on them. Anyone have any actual orange? Like, you go looking, you just get all the lot of this. But then, there's some in here that are more orangey than others. There we go. The orange means nothing! I'm disappoint! That's okay. I'll eat them anyway. But, you know. I don't really have a lot going on in them. You know, these look like bugles. So, let's try these. These are taco and hardal. Taco and mustard. Taco with a K. Let's see if we can... Uh, no, I can them. Let's see if we can zoom. So you can see the taco and mustard. But they do look like bugles. So... Crunch, says the bag. Next up. Crunch taco and hardal uh, aromali chips. I was going to say chips, but it's C-I-P-S. Crisps with mustard taco with a C this time. Seasoning. Mmm, mustard and tacos. What? Not appealing to you? Hmm. That's because you've never tried this uniquely shaped snack. Mm. Lies. Again. It's like y'all forgot bugles existed. This looked exactly like bugles, only a little bit flattened. Although, let's be honest, most bugles are kind of in the flat. They don't do a very good job of bugling them anymore. So, whatever. Everything about this yum is interesting, but perhaps nothing more so than its 80-year backstory. Back in 1927, Turkey and Mexico became BFFs by signing a friendship agreement. For real? Cool. Despite sounding like an exchange of friendship bracelets, the agreement actually established an important alliance. The countries traded their most coveted goods and set up embassies within each other's borders. Their leaders even made the 7,000-mile trek to visit each other, sort of like a head-of-state sleepover. In the past two decades, they've gone from trading $1 million worth of goods per year to a whopping $1.3 billion. What an odd thing to happen in a weird sort of way. Like, of all random places, Turkey and Mexico were like, let's be cool. I mean, I'm all for it. I'm all for everyone being cool with each other. It's just the world we live in is just like, oh, okay. Uh, anywho, considering the massive cultural divides Turkey and Mexico bridged in order to foster this fruitful friendship, the mustard-taco combo doesn't seem so wild. In fact, we think mustard and tacos are just as dynamic a duo as the countries behind them. But don't take our word for it. Dig in and taste for yourself. Let's do it! Let's... Taco and hard off. Bugles. Oh, no. Lies. Wait. Oh, I think they just all got smashed, because they're just all flat. What? Like, there's no actual... Are there any of you... Did any of you survive the trip to, to bugle them? To be shaped? No? Everybody's flat. No one looks like they do in the picture. Well, that's okay. We're just gonna... These two don't really have much of a scent. Hmm. Okay, well... We gonna eat a sort of triangle. Again, not a lot happening. Now, I'm not expecting the taco bit to taste like... Like you buy, like, ta taco Doritos or whatever here. I'm not expecting it to taste like American taco flavor, generic taco flavor. But whatever the Mexican taco flavor is supposed to be, 
I don't know because I don't taste it. Whatever the official mustard from Turkey is supposed to take over. I don't know because I can't really taste it. And I've had mustard flavored things before. And usually that mustard doesn't play around. So unless turkey has like a more like super chill mustard flavor, these are very chill. They make it seem like it's supposed to be like uber flavor. I mean, this dude is like shoveling them into like, you know, a brick fire and there's like peppers and stuff on the back. But, I mean, no disrespect to you, turkey, but come on, get your flavor game on. I know you have a flavor game. Your turkey, for God's sakes. But these are just kind of like, yeah, okay. Just random crunchy things. Again, not bad. Just. Okay. Where's the flavor? I have questions. You know, at the rate we're going, I'm just gonna end up putting all these chips into one bag and then just snack on them whenever because I want some flavor. What's the, I got all these chips and no flavor. Move all these chips out of them. So this is crispy. This I feel like, aside from the, the fancy videos I've done, the Halloween video and the fancy fancy video, it's not often that I just start going through all my stuff, but I'm kind of hungry, and so far I've been kind of disappointed in the lack of, again, flavor. I feel like I've said that word a lot, but it's the only one that really works here. So let's try this time with the crispy. That is supposed to be, uh, baharatli? Baharatli. I'm not sure what spices are supposed to be. They look like ruffles with stuff on them. These are okur, crispy, uh... Turtikli cracker baharati. I'm gonna move on because I can't say anything correctly and I'm ruining the language. Do you love plain boring snacks? No! No! We've established that I don't. If you do, well, you're gonna seriously hate these crackers. Good! Because that is the opposite of what I'm looking for. Every nook and cranny of these ridged rounds is packed with baharat, a blend of spices that's insanely popular across the Middle East, including Turkey. Goody! It literally means spices in Arabic. Good! I want all the baharat in the world, please. Thank you. You can think of this exotic spice mixture the way you might think of pumpkin spice seasoning in the United States. But why pumpkin spice? While each blend uses the same spices for baharat, it's onion powder, parsley, garlic, thyme, and paprika. All right, I don't know how you can screw it up with all those on here. Uh, every chef uses different proportions. To us, this crunchy yum definitely flavor favors one of those spices over the others. Seems like the folks over at Ulker are big fans of thyme. Eh. But maybe you'll find a different spice sticks out when you start munching. There's only one way to find out. They're great! There is! Find out! Let's get some flavor. You've promised me. You've promised me in your booklet that this will have flavor. This vaguely reminds me of something. I do smell the thyme a little bit. Well, I'm obviously not going to get high on them. There's not a whole lot of scent happening here. They're flatter than I thought they would be. Although, it's not like the picture makes it seem like they're not going to be a like, flat cracker. Flat cracker! Hello, I am a flat cracker. Enjoy me. I look a little bit like a tiny... Uh, I was going to say Trisket. That's wrong. Tiny Ritz cracker with ridges. Hey, flavor! All right! Mmm... I'm getting the onion powder. I'm trying to see if there's a lot of time happening. No. Yeah, kinda. No. But I feel like the onion powder is, is a little bit stronger than the time. You know, I noticed I do that a lot in like every video. I just kind of shake them around. There's no reason for it whatsoever. Sometimes with chips, I shake them around because I want to find the bigger chip and let all the little things settle to the bottom. Well, there's really no need. There's no reason for it. None of them are broken. They all look great. Oh, I'm trying to focus. There we go. I mean, they're fine. Hello. Welcome to the bag of chips where there's actually flavor. Delicious. So these are good. Because they taste like something. How? And they are crispy. They are very crunchy. So these are nice. I think people would enjoy these. Ow. Oh. Alright, one more thing. Which is almost all- you know what? There's no tiny yum bag in here. 
<laughs> Weird. Not really. Maybe turkey's not into hard candy and tiny things, which is fine. Not everyone has to have hard candy. These are, I'm going to ruin this, and I apologize in advance, uh, Mevlana. Does the S sound different when it's got a little doodad on the bottom? I'm going to make the assumption that, yes, it, it's supposed to, but what that noise is, I don't know what. So the S up here, it's got a little, like, on, on below it, and the one up there also. So I don't know what all that is. So, sorry. Anywho, I'm going to pronounce it the dumb American way. Mevlana uh, Sekeri, perhaps. And I'm not even going to try the other one because I don't know. Oh, are these those little mint things? <gasps> I thought they were, my brain saw like little white round things and they defaulted to um, like yogurt covered something or other. I'm used to yogurt covered raisins, but who might know? But these actually kind of look more like those wedding mints that you get. And I love those so much. I love their I love their texture and I love how they taste. So if these are anything like those, I'm excited. So these are sugar candies in strawberry, bergamot, or orange uh, chocolate flavor. Uh, the picture is clearly strawberry with its uh, red uh, redness. And uh, I definitely don't have that. I have Sade or Sade, perhaps, depending upon its pronunciation. Uh, we'll see if they uh, tell me which one. These treats might look like the after dinner mints you find at your local diner. Hey, but they're obviously not all. Oh, they're one of Turkey's oldest and most favorite candies. Pop one in your mouth and it'll instantly be to soften, releasing one of three flavors. If your package is red, it's not. Expect oh so sweet strawberry. Orange, it's not. Orange chocolate sugariness await. And silver, it is. Your candy is flavored with bergamot, a citrus oil that gives Earl Grey tea its flavor. I don't know how I feel about that because I don't like tea. <sighs> Anywho, all are equally sweet. Okay. And within good reason. Uh, Konya, the ancient city where this yum is made, is the sugar center of Turkey. It's one of the few places that meets the specific soil requirements necessary to grow sugar beets, of which Turkey is the fifth largest producer. That's why the Konya Sugar Factory, the largest in Turkey, was built there. Every year, 900,000 farmers cultivate the beets, which are processed into 500,000 tons of sugar, and then crafted into uber sweet treats like these. There's one downside to the sugariness, though. These candies dissolve incredibly fast. And with how delicious they are, they'll go even faster. Oh. Well, let's taste these bergamot flavored minties. They smell like... Oh. They sm kind of smell like tea, if that makes sense. Or like some kind of herb. They're like super strong. Like a very subtle, very chill. I don't like tea. There's the orange chocolate and there's a strawberry and I end up with tea. Go figure. Hop. They are like the, oh, ow. oh they are like those mints. Mm. They do have the texture of those mints you find at weddings or after dinner. Oh, I like those. I love, I love the texture. Mmm, flavor. Hmm. It is a little on the citrusy side, which they said. Not bad. I think I'd prefer one of the other two personally, but it's very mellow. Um, so that's okay. It's it's good. It would be good. It's good for still like after dinner, just like you know, enjoyment. I might have. I might have one more. It's very very super relaxing. I do like how they're just kind of... If you've never had this type of mint, I think, um, <clears throat> you can find them pretty much anywhere. I think the easiest place I found them was, like, at a craft store, like Michael's, of all places, in, like, the wedding area that they have. It's like, here's some mints. Buy a bag of them. I think they're good. Some people don't like them, but, hmm. Yeah, that's doable. I'm glad it doesn't taste like straight up tea, because then I'd be like, mm -hmm. I don't like tea. I'm not a fan. Alright, so we've already tried almost everything in here. There's three other things that we will get to eventually in about five seconds.
So have you ever had to record yourself because you forgot to record yourself while you were recording yourself? I have, and that's what I've done here, clearly, as the little intro beforehand has shown you. And uh, I've done this once before. The problem is I just forget to plug my mic back in, and then I am completely dumb, and then don't pay attention, and I start doing things, and uh, don't even notice that the audio is not picking up, I don't know, literally anything. So here we are, with me sitting in front of my mic. You can't see me because I'm not recording my face this time, because I just need the audio. So let's just have some, uh, some lush, and I'll just have to recap on what it was like, rather than giving you the at-the-moment response to said lush. And uh, the, the, this right here, the, they are lush cocoa cream mosaic cookies, is what they happen to be. Mosaic cookies with chocolate cream filling. And uh, at the beginning I was making weird faces because it was hot that day, and it's still hot. It's hot right now. It's hot outside. It's really hot. But I like hot, so it's okay. I don't mind too much. Anyway, welcome to a, a really bad dub, so here we go. By now you've learned that Turkey has no shortage of traditional flavors and foods, from baharat to chewy cesarean, and I still can't pronounce that correctly, but it has to do with something that I have yet to eat on this particular video. Um, but country also boasts plenty of new innovations, chief among them chocolate. Historically, the Middle East hasn't been much of a chocolate hub, because cacao doesn't particularly flourish in the desert. But during the last century, chocolate has begun to earn the appreciation of Middle Easterners, especially the Turkish. As the bridge between Europe and Asia, Turkey is often the first country in the Middle East to hear about European innovations and turn them into something unique. That's the case with these cookies. Venus, the company that makes them, has only been in business for four years, but in that time they've put a totally no new spin on Europe's chocolate. The cookie shell has a unique vanilla and chocolate swirl, while the inside is filled with creamy, delectable chocolate. What will they dream up next? And here at this moment you can see me kind of looking at the book because it's very baffling. There's a background on here, and I don't know what it's supposed to mean because on the picture it's strange. They don't, they look like dates almost? Or like dates inside of nuts? Or maybe they're supposed to be hazelnuts? I'm looking at it right now and I, it's still, see, what is that? I don't, I don't understand, it's confusing. I don't know why they're there. Because they're not cookies and no idea. So let's have some lush. I won't have any lush because I've already eaten them all. But luckily this package wasn't hard to open, so there was no wrestling with it like usual. They look like, you know, just your usual kind of, kind of shortbreadish cookies. Pretty basic. I might as well give you eating noises because I'm just, otherwise I'm going to sit here like a weirdo. But uh, they're pretty basic. Chomp chomp. Nom nom. Om nom. Nom nom nom. Om nom 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 nom. But no, they really were like just kind of just shortbreadish on the outside. Um, the chocolate on the inside is pretty tasty. It's it's kind of a, a creamy sort of chocolate that was happening rather than just like your typical solid choco center. They did remind me of those Japanese cookies that I ate. If you saw that video, the the made cookies. Although I think I will say that the the interior of these cookies were better than the made cookies. Sorry, made cookies, but this was a little bit more creamy, and I was trying to break it in half so I could show you, but the cookie just kept wanting to like break around the interior because it has sort of like a baked in I guess more shell like thing going on before you got to the gooey middle <laughs> but otherwise it's pretty good cookie the, the, quite quite the the tasty deliciousness very it got crumblies there was some crumblage happening and uh, just had to deal with it it's very sad and now we have the magical Oh god, I, you know, I still don't know how to pronounce this because there's all sorts of consonants and vowels next to each other and it's just, it boggles my tiny little brain. But I'm going to give it a go again. And uh, so it's, and here you can see it on the screen. It's KFC? 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 Fistikri? Fizzerin. And I, you know, I don't know how any of these are supposed to be pronounced uh because i'm just talking english and turkish is a completely different language from the english so uh, what are you gonna do anywho it's a turkish delight with carrot pistachio and coconut which sounded very intriguing you can't even begin to imagine the lengths we went to for this yum carrot pistachio and coconut that's not a combination you see every day very very true that's because this is a special version of turkish delight called and again it's the which is specifically made in Gaziantep, a city located close to the borders of Iraq and Syria. Even though this chewy carrot sweet might seem a bit nutty to us, both literally and figuratively, 
It's a snack that many folks who live in the southernmost section of Turkey enjoy every day. So whether you're celebrating your burger, Turk, if you're Turkish and listening, I'm really sorry. I'm not doing that to be a jerk. I just literally have no clue how to pronounce it. <laughs> or cursing us for sending you carrots. Know that with each bite, you're getting a tried and true taste of the Middle East. And I'll have you know that when the Narnia movie first came out, and I don't remember if I saw the book or if I saw the movie and then read the book or vice versa, but basically in that book and the movie, the Ice Queen gives uh, the small traitor child Turkish delight. And it's so, so good. So good. To the point that I was like, well, I want to try Turkish delight. So I tried some Turkish delight. And I was exceedingly disappointed with what I saw. Or tasted, I guess, rather. It wasn't, I think it might have been from the UK. I don't really remember. It's been a while. It was kind of boring. So I wasn't sure how this one was going to go. I didn't have super high hopes. I had somewhat higher hopes because it was Kieran's pistachio and it's in a little tray here which was kind of nifty instead of just being bouncing around in its own little package. The dog was being weird as usual. You should No, no one should be surprised about what the dog's doing. Although it did try to, uh, you know, blob its way out of its tray. I don't know if it like melted in transit and then re-solidified or whatever. So the exterior is covered in like super flaked coconut, like super flaky. And smelling it, I'm going to tell you, it smelled a lot like wood. It's going to sound, that sounds really weird, I know. But, I mean, it smelled like wood. Like, if you go into, like, a Menards or Home Depot or basically any place that sells, you know, freshly cut wood, it just smelled like that uh, that Home Depot kind of place. So that was throwing me off. And I'm like, well, I hope it's good. Because <laughs> I don't really know now. But it actually turned out to be surprisingly tasty. So the carrots, it's it was kind of orangey, which I think I show in a few seconds here. But the orangey was from, so it was like kind of a chill carrot taste. Like it wasn't like super carroty. Although I don't really know if you can get like a super carroty flavor. Like, because carrot flavor isn't that powerful to begin with. Uh, and then it had some pistachio chunks, which was quite nice. Because I do enjoy me some pistachios. Dog, you're getting your audio into my audio. What are you doing? He's staring at me from... Here, obligatory audio doggo. Doggo. Obligatory audio doggo. You smell? Sniff. Well, now I'm just making this weird because you're not doing anything. But it was a pretty tasty snack. And it's definitely better than the other Turkish delight that I'd had years and years and years and years and years ago. And I quite enjoyed it, actually. I think it's kind of my second favorite yum, really, out of this whole box. So it was pretty enjoyable. Who knew that carrots and pistachios could be tasty? But they were. Although the coconut had, like, no flavor. It was pretty much not there. The Turkish delight I had in the past was covered in powdered sugar. Um, and I think that's what it was like in the, the Narnia movie as well. But here it's it's coconut, and it's super, it's so desiccated. It kind of just, it kind of did look, like, a little bit, like wood flakes so here we it's time to enjoy cake now that's right enjoy cake k-e-k -cake. cake oh wait now i have to find out my book here hold on there it is right there oh yeah there's, there's coconut all over my booklet i kind of it got coconut everywhere luckily i had the box there so the box caught most of the coconut but here we're going to this is torku enjoy cake and i'm pretty sure i remember torku the company or whatever from something in the past but uh it's a chocolate and vanilla sponge cake with orange filling. So here we go. More bad dubbing. Get ready. Uh, do you need a reminder to enjoy cake? Probably not. Still, this cake uh, displays a giant instruction promptly, promptly on the package, just in case. You shouldn't have any... Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying there? It's because this cake is moist. Mm, the word bother you. Moist. Anyway, sorry. That's what I was doing. Uh, this rich cake is swirled with vanilla and chocolate batter, then filled with a delightful citrus orange gem. Cakes, K-E-K-S, is also cake, plural, in Turkish, are among the country's most popular ready-to-eat snacks. While cake was once traditionally baked at home, Turkish snack manufacturers worked hard to make their products taste as close as possible to the treats that come out of the ovens across the country. To us, the extra effort couldn't be more obvious. It's no wonder they were so confident in naming this cake. Enjoy. It's basically impossible not to. That's right, slam it down past me in her purple outfit who can't seem to remember how to do anything. There was a tiny cut there because it took me about five years to open the package 
and while it would have been funny with audio, it's not as funny without audio. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna edit this out of here. So it's a pretty large cake, actually. Ow. We got to get to the orange. We got to eat more of the cake to get to the orange. Hold on. It's not a lot like you know typical. Oh, see there you can see some of the orange in there. Let's uh let's get some zoom in power so you can see the orange because I know. Look at how good it all looks. No, it's so good. You want it? It's so good. Mmm, tasty orange. Anyway, it smelled a lot like um, <clears throat> just your basic, like if you get like a little Debbie snack cake of some kind pulled out of the package. So it didn't really smell any different or magical than, you know, a package snack really. So they're they're touting it as trying to be it as it's fresh out of the oven. It's pretty much your. It's, it's, a, it's a package cake, you know. I mean, no disrespect to turkey, but it's about the same as what you would get here. It, you know, I didn't have any magical fresh out of the oven-ness with it. So, you know, it is what it is. Wasn't bad. Wasn't super amazing. I wasn't amazingly impressed. But it's a nice change, you know, when you get that orange in there. So, you know, what you gonna do? Tasty good. Hand gestures, gang signs. Wait, no, sorry. It's not that. Ha ha ha. Have you ever had to just make stuff up as you go and watch yourself blather on? I don't even know what I'm talking about here. Like, I literally don't remember what I'm discussing. I'm clearly talking about something, but what that would be, I, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe that, maybe I'm talking about, the, that's the, that was the day where I couldn't say anything. But hey, now that we're done eating cake, and thank god this video is almost over and I can stop making an idiot of myself. Dog, quit flapping your ears. We're gonna get to the back here. I could have had the, the Yum Yum or the Super Yum box, and uh, I don't show them to you here, but one of them is uh, Fruit Leathers with Sweet Potassio pota Potassium Filling. Mm, no, Sweet Pistachio Filling. So it's ground pistachios drenched in grape syrup and wrapped in chewy fruit leather. You know what? I've never liked the term fruit leather. That doesn't sound good to me. That just sounds weird. Leather is, you know, cows and stuff. Don't make fruit leather well, weird. There's also crispy ketchup sticks, which we didn't get, or a Tetsen chocolate hazelnut nougat. Now that sounds like it would have been tasty, so. But we didn't get any of that, because I only get the tiny baby box, because I'm cheap! So, clue to next month's box. We're off to the land of giants and greats, where you can go for the gold, but it's up to the fates. Here you'll find yums, both renowned and superb, from fragrant fruit cookies to chips covered in herbs. I still don't know where that is. Like, I don't even really know where to go. I guess whoever's... Who's hosting the Olympics next? Because I don't know. On the picture behind here, it's it's bread, grapes, and... I don't know what these things are. They look like they're shaped like tacos, to be honest. They're just weird shapes. So, I don't know what we're doing. Um, I'm, and you know what? Guess what? It's obligatory doggo time. Heck yeah, obligatory doggo. He was just kind of bouncing around, so I invited him up and let him smell all the things, and he was just his usual self. Just sniffing and snuffling and trying to lick my face, because when is he not trying to lick my face? Like, honestly, anytime you come up here, yeah, you give me that look. You just, you try and lick my face, because it, it tastes like food. I don't know what you think you're going to get out of it. It You're not going to taste anything. Ah, whatever. Thanks for listening and watching. I'm <laughs>